Hey everyone, welcome back. You know, we talk a lot about fine ops on this show and our listeners are always asking us for more ways to, you know, really get a handle on their cloud costs. And uh, well, today we're doing a deep dive on one of the most powerful tools in the fine ops toolbox, benchmarking. Yeah, you can think of fine ops kind of like, like uh, using a fitness tracker. Yeah. But in this case, instead of tracking your steps or calories, you're tracking your organization's cloud usage and costs. I like that. So instead of just like randomly trying to cut costs here and there, benchmarking gives you like a data-driven approach to figure out where you can actually make the most impact. Exactly. Benchmarking is like having a roadmap and a compass for your cloud costs. It helps you understand where you are, where you need to go, yep. and how you stack up against the competition. Okay, that makes sense. But when we say comparing, what are we actually comparing? So there are two main types of benchmarking, internal and external. Internal benchmarking is like looking in the mirror. It's about comparing different teams or departments within your own company. For example, let's say your marketing team has figured out a way to reduce their cloud cost per customer acquisition, way lower than your sales team. That's a sign that something interesting is going on. And you might be able to replicate those wins elsewhere in the organization. So it's like a friendly competition within your company to see who can be the most cloud efficient. Exactly. I like it. Okay, so that's internal benchmarking. What about external? External benchmarking is where you see how you measure up against the rest of the world. You're looking at how your cloud costs, performance, and efficiency compare to your competitors, mm -hmm. and even just the industry average. Okay, so I can see how my company's cloud spending stacks up against my biggest competitor. That's incredible. It is, and it can be incredibly valuable, especially when you're trying to make the case for investing in new cloud technologies or optimizations. That makes sense. But I imagine getting that kind of competitive data is tricky, right? I mean, companies aren't just going to hand over their cloud performance metrics to anyone who asks. You're right. Data sensitivity is a huge concern when it comes to external benchmarking. You can't just call up your competitor and ask for their cloud secrets. Right. That's where organizations like the FinOps Foundation come in. The FinOps Foundation. Yeah. They act as a neutral third party. Mm -hmm. They collect and anonymize data from a bunch of different companies, right. which allows you to see how you stack up against the industry average ah. without compromising anyone's confidential information. So it's like a safe space for companies to share data yeah. and learn from each other without giving away any trade secrets. Precisely. The Phenops Foundation. That's really interesting. So there are like a global community of Phenops professionals who are all dedicated to advancing the practice of cloud financial management. That's amazing. Okay, so we've established that benchmarking, both internal and external, can be incredibly valuable. But how do we actually get started? Where do we even begin? Well, you don't have to do everything at once. Start small and build from there. Start small. Okay, I like that. So instead of trying to boil the ocean, we should start with like a dip in the shallow end. What does that actually look like in practice? It's all about taking a phased approach. We call it the crawl, walk, run approach to benchmarking. Crawl, walk, run. Yeah. I like it. Tell me more about this. So walk me through this crawl, walk, run thing. What's the crawl phase look like? Okay, so in the crawl phase, you're not trying to build Rome in a day, right? You're starting with things super simple. Yeah. Like pick one metric that's really important to your business and just compare it between two teams. Okay, so let's say I'm, uh, I run a big e-commerce site. Instead of trying to analyze every single cloud cost, I might start by comparing like the cost per customer acquisition for my marketing team versus my sales team. Bingo. You got it. You're starting small, getting comfortable with the process, and most importantly, you're starting to gather that data. Yeah. Got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> so once we've, uh, we've mastered the crawl phase, what's next? Time to lace up our sneakers and start jogging. What does walk look like? Exactly. So you've dipped your toes in the water. Now it's time to start wading a bit deeper. You might start tracking a few more metrics, maybe bring in more teams for comparison. And you're going to want to start thinking about how to make all this data easier to digest. Huh. Visualizations. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Visualizations. I'm all about those. A spreadsheet full of numbers just doesn't do it for me. Right. It's like trying to read a novel written in binary code. <laughs> Dashboards, it can be your new best friend in the walk phase. Dashboards. I like the sound of that. So we're talking about taking all that raw data and turning it into something that's actually useful, something you can actually understand at a glance. Charts, graphs, all that good stuff. Exactly. A good dashboard is like a storybook for your data. It helps you quickly spot those trends, those outliers, those aha moments. Okay, dashboards, got it. But let's say we've been diligently crawling and walking. 
We're feeling pretty good about our internal comparisons, but we're ready for more, you know? We're ready to take on the world. What does it mean to run with benchmarking? Running. That's where you take those internal insights and you start looking outward. Remember the Phenops Foundation we talked about earlier? Yeah, those folks who help us compare ourselves to the competition without, you know, getting sued. Exactly. This is where you tap into those resources. You start digging into those industry benchmarks and you really see how you stack up against the best of the best. And maybe you realize that we're not as awesome as we thought we were. Well, maybe. Or maybe you find out you're crushing it in certain areas. Either way, those external benchmarks can be eye-opening. You might discover that your cloud infrastructure costs are totally normal, but your data storage costs are through the roof. Okay, I see what you mean. It's like getting a report card for your cloud spending. And like any good report card, it shows you where you're excelling and where you need to put in a little extra effort. Exactly. Yeah. And just like a report card helps you improve your grades, benchmarking helps you improve your cloud efficiency and ultimately your bottom line. So benchmarking isn't just about saving money. It's about being strategic with your cloud spending, making sure it's aligned with your overall business goals. Now you're getting it. It's not just about being cheap. It's about being smart. Yeah, smart and strategic. I like the sound of that. But, you know, I'm already hearing some of our listeners saying, hold on a minute. This all sounds great in theory, but what about the real world? What about the challenges? We talked about data sensitivity, but are there other hurdles people should be aware of as they embark on this benchmarking adventure? Of course. It's not always easy. One of the biggest challenges is just figuring out what to measure in the first place. Yeah, with so many different metrics and variables, it's easy to get lost in the weeds. How do we make sure we're focusing on the metrics that actually matter? That's where it's crucial to tie your benchmarking efforts back to your overall business goals. Okay, so before we even start collecting data, we need to sit down and ask ourselves, what are we really trying to achieve here? Exactly. What are your top priorities as a business? So let's say our top priority is to improve customer retention. How would that influence our approach to benchmarking? Well, if you're all about keeping those customers happy, you'd want to focus on metrics that directly or indirectly impact that. Like, are you using a cost-effective cloud-based platform that lets your support team quickly resolve customer issues? Okay, so instead of just looking at our overall cloud spending, we might take a closer look at the cost and performance of our customer support systems. Exactly. Are those systems running smoothly and efficiently? Are they helping you retain customers? Or are they actually costing you customers due to poor performance? Right, because a clunky, outdated support system is going to lead to frustrated customers, which means lost revenue. Exactly. It's all connected. So it's not just about cutting costs for the sake of cutting costs. It's about understanding how those costs relate to our overall business objectives and then using benchmarking to optimize spending in a way that actually moves the needle. Now you're thinking like a true Phenops pro. I'm trying. I'm trying. But, you know, even if we've got all our ducks in a row, we've got our data, we've identified areas where we can optimize, there's still one big hurdle left. And what's that? Convincing the people who actually hold the purse strings, mm -hmm. getting buy-in from leadership. So how do we actually get them on board? How do we convince leadership to invest in this whole benchmarking thing? Honestly, it's all about how you tell the story. A story? We're talking about spreadsheets and cloud costs here. Think about it. Nobody gets excited about a spreadsheet, but everyone loves a good story. Okay, so how do we turn our benchmarking data into a compelling narrative? You got to connect those numbers to something they care about. The bottom line. Don't just say, hey, our benchmarking shows we need a new database. Frame it like this. Our current database, it's costing us X dollars every month in lost productivity and customer churn. But our benchmarking, it shows that by investing in this new solution, the industry standard, by the way, we can actually turn that around. We can recoup those losses and boost customer retention by Y percent. Ah, OK. So we're not just asking for money to fix some tech problem they don't understand. We're presenting a solution to a business problem they care about. Exactly. You've done your homework. You're not just chasing the latest shiny object. You're making data-driven decisions. And that's what leadership wants to see. Data-driven decisions. Music to a CEO's ears. Okay, this has been incredibly insightful. But before we wrap up, got to circle back to something you said earlier. Benchmarking. It's not a one-and-done kind of thing, right? Why is that? Think about it. The cloud. It's not static. It's always changing, evolving. New tech, new pricing models. Your own business needs change. What works today might be obsolete tomorrow. 
So we got to stay flexible, keep our eyes open. Exactly. Continuous benchmarking. It's like those regular checkups you're supposed to get, right? Yeah, you don't just go to the doctor once and assume you're good to go for life, right? Got to make it a habit. Exactly. And just like those checkups can catch small problems before they become big ones, benchmarking helps you identify and address those cloud cost inefficiencies before they blow up your budget. Prevention is always chipper than a cure, right? So for our listeners who are ready to jump into the world of benchmarking, what's one piece of advice you'd give them? Start small. Don't overthink it. Pick one or two key metrics, the ones that really matter to your business, and just start there. Remember, crawl walk, run. Love it. Simple, actionable advice. This has been another awesome episode of The Deep Dive, folks. Big thanks to our expert for sharing all this wisdom. And as always, thanks to you, our amazing listeners, for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next one.